change your life. We're landing on verse 12 today. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors or trespasses, however you want to say it. Um, we got into the petition part of the prayer. Last week we were talking about the petition for bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Today the petition is on forgiveness. And two of our deepest needs on the physical side are food. On the spiritual side is forgiveness. Let's have a confession time. <laughs> Has anybody here ever spilled their milk? <laughs> Come on, we've all spilled it. I mean, you got national don't cry over spilled milk day. What do you do when you spill your milk? You wipe it up and you keep moving, right? It's, we all made messes of our life at one point or another, and the biggest barriers to any inner peace is this thing called guilt, because people get stuck in the past. And life is difficult, but it gets worse when you're carrying around a whole lot of regrets and shame and things you can't get out of your mind. Mind monsters running all around in your head. You cannot have peace of mind and carry around guilt and resentment at the same time. It doesn't work. Now, we were created with a soul, and we were given a conscience to know what's right and what's wrong. And the universal part of it is we've all blown it at one time or another, every one of us. Nobody's perfect. We've all made mistakes. Despicable me. Don't judge me. I was born to be awesome. Not perfect, right? Guilt is terribly destructive. And it's like you're trying to keep a secret in your life that you're ashamed of, and that causes all other kinds of emotional difficulties. It's actually the engine light on the dashboard. Yes, Tina, about that. Uh, the, the engine light goes on your dashboard, right? It's, not, it's a warning light. It's a warning image. It's a corrective light. It's not supposed to stay on, right? So you correct what's wrong, and then you get on with your life. And if you don't learn how to remove guilt from your life, you're going to be exhausted most of your life. It, it's like trying to hold a raft underwater in the pool. You blew up the raft, and now you're trying to get it underwater, and it keeps on popping up. It's the same thing with guilt. You try to rationalize it, you try to justify it, you try to blame it on somebody else, and you push it down and you try to forget about it. But the fact that it was wrong is why it keeps on popping back up. It takes enormous energy to live in the river of denial, right? And we try to keep ourselves distracted and we stay busy running from one event to another. And then but when you get home and you lay your head down on your pillow, it pops back in your mind again and the haunting continues. We make excuses. But excuses don't erase the guilt, or we compare, we look at somebody else and we're like, wow. We look at somebody else much worse than we are, and we think that'll make me feel somehow better about myself. And then the escapism comes in. Time to pop a couple of pills, time to smoke the funny weed, eat the gummy bears, and drink excessively, right? None of that will help get rid of guilt. When the haze wears off, the guilt is all still there. When you truly understand that your Father, God in heaven, has truly forgiven you for whatever it is, however you messed up, it's only when you realize that your Father in heaven has forgiven you that your guilt gets removed. The antidote is found in the Lord's Prayer in verse 12. This then is how we should pray, forgive us our debts. And the key is understanding how God forgives you. And then in turn, when somebody wrongs you, you're able to offer that same forgiveness. You let them off the hook which basically, so you're not on the hook. That's what happens, all right? So let's look at that. Number one, how does God forgive me? He forgives me instantly. The moment I ask, there's no hesitation, there's no delay, God forgives instantly. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, let the wicked leave their way of life and change their way of thinking. Let them turn to the Lord our God. He is merciful and quick to forgive. He's quick to forgive. The moment you ask without delay, God forgives right away. Why do we have a hard time understanding that? Because we don't do that. <laughs> Human beings, we like to hold it over. I can't, it's hard, right? I mean, come on. We're very slow to forgive. There's something deep inside us that says, you hurt me, I'm going to hit you. hit me, I'm going to hit you back harder. Or you hurt, I'm not talking to you anymore, I'm going to back off of you. You know, it's like we're very slow to forgive and we hold it over people's heads. It stays with us. If you look at verse 14 and 15 of the Our Father down below, it says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you. And we need to get this down. This is really important. It's, it's universal. It's a universal need. God is always quick to forgive. And the moment you go to him, he forgives you in an instant. He never holds it over your head. He's perfect. 
So that's how, he never makes us wait either. You know, we think, oh, I gotta wait, I gotta keep coming to him. In 1 John 1, 9, it was one of my first life verses. And what's bothering me is I know I have my phone in my pocket and I didn't turn it off and I'm waiting for it to go off. So why don't I just turn that off as we speak? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I learned that verse right away. When we were at Maranatha, at every prayer meeting, I was like, 1 John 1, 9, right? In another translation, just for a different nuance, if we confess our sins to God, he will keep his promise and do what is right. He will forgive our sins and make us clean from all our wrongdoings. So what do we, we take it to God, we confess it to God, and we release it to God. Palms down, leave it at the foot of the cross. Don't pick it back up again. The truth is some people feel guilty about not feeling guilty. Know what I mean? You ever have that one? And your motto should be, I should always feel guilty about something. And then, then you'll feel better about yourself. You know, but the, you don't. You feel worse about yourself. And then there's those that are, you know, gaslighting is. So they, they take advantage of that and they try to make you feel guilty for their crazy behavior. <laughs> the truth is God wants to forgive us and we need his forgiveness to live the kind of life that he has in store for us. He doesn't want you walking around with that burden all over you. God forgives me not only instantly, but secondly, he forgives me repeatedly. Survey says... How many of you guys did the same sin more than once? <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. The other ones are polishing your halos, but I know <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we, we all have areas of perpetual failure in our lives where we keep struggling. Yeah, we're caught in a cycle of defeat. and We keep stumbling and God forgives repeatedly. The Bible tells us in Nehemiah, you are a God of forgiveness, always ready, always ready to pardon gracious and merciful, full of love. You might want to lock into the always ready. Not just the first time you struggle with your sin, but always ready to forgive. He's more eager. God's more eager to forgive you than we are to ask, when you or I are to come and ask for forgiveness. That's the kind of God he is. I, I always, I used to think, and sometimes I still do, that, you know, God's getting tired of me coming to him with the same sin. It's like, Lord, did it again. Lord, the same thing I said, or, or same thing I did yesterday, or same thing I did 10 minutes ago. You know, it's just, here I am again. You know, here we go again. Especially if anybody's struggling with areas of addiction, and we're all in recovery from one thing or another, hurts, habits, hang-ups. You know, so we all deal with it. Should, yeah, look at her, that poor thing, man. Do you think God doesn't understand? You know, and we've all been like that. There's a, a guy up there too, right? Look at this poor guy. I just... We've all been here. And I would think God's looking up in heaven for me, I would think. <laughs> and he's saying, hey, Chuck, man, uh, couldn't you at least get creative about your sins? You know, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, you know? And, and, but the truth is, I'm the one that's getting tired of coming to God. I'm like, I, it makes me feel like I'm a failure. Or it makes me feel like I'm a loser. Or it makes me feel like I'm not making any progress. But the truth is, you know, it's like God never tires of me coming to him. He never tires of you coming to him. You know, we need his forgiveness and, and the fact that he's a forgiving God and to ask for it. You got to keep asking. Jesus loves to forgive you more than you can ever imagine. And when you ask, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 7, Christ is always interceding on our behalf. He's always doing that. Sitting at the right hand of the Father. You know, Realize that guilt is a lot like garbage. You have different sized garbage pails in your house. You got a little one in the bathroom probably, you got a bigger one in the kitchen, and then you got the big one outside. You might have one in your office or whatever, but you have to take it out repeatedly. You know, you have to take it out repeatedly or the house starts to stink. That's how life works too. It's just as foolish, even more foolish to let guilt pile up in your life. When the trash fills up, take out the trash. Keep short accounts with God. You know, I realize you're a God that loves me. You're a God that's willing to forgive me. And that word forgive literally means to cancel a debt. Now, sin is a debt that we had against God. We can't bounce the scales by ourselves. It's impossible. You know, but praise God, Jesus took care of it and paid the debt in full. Isaiah 53, Isaiah was written 700 years before Jesus was born. I don't even, and I'm not proud, but I'm pretty sure that crucifixion wasn't even a method of death at that time. But he said this, the prophet, he was pierced for our transgressions. 
He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray and each of us has turned our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now, on the cross, Jesus said, Teletestai, it, it is finished. The debt has been canceled. In Ephesians 2, it says, For it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. And through faith is the belief part. That's simply what it is. He said, it's not of your own doing, but it's God's gift. There's nothing to boast of since it's not the result of your own effort. I got to get that part down. How about you guys? You know, it's just God's grace. How do you get this kind of healing grace? You know, I mean, it's really as simple as ABC. I'm hearing the Michael Jackson song right there. But it, if you want to have every sin forgiven in your life, it's ABC. I admit it, I believe it, and I commit. So admit, I just admit I've blown it. You know, I, look, I admit I sinned. God, you were right, I was wrong. You put up guardrails and I went flying over them. I don't know, there's something in this when somebody says don't do something. <laughs> We just do it. I was thinking about that, especially when we're younger, right? Don't do that. Boom. You know, just draw. You could eat any tree, but except the one. Where is it? You know, it's like there's just something in us. But I, and a lot of times we think we're God of our own life. It's the Eric Burden song. It's my life and I'll do what I want. Or Frankie says, I did it my way. But we fail to check in with God. Lord, what do you want me to do here? Lord, why am I even here? Why am I on this planet? Every time I've checked in with God, and there's a lot of times I did not, trust me, you kind of get out of the spirit. He stopped me, there's a time, he stopped me in an instant. And thank God he did, because he gave me something that I couldn't even dream of or imagine, so much better than that. But I literally, in an instant, he stopped me. Awesome. But again, we know God created the universe to create this planet, to create this galaxy and this planet for environments for you to live in. He created you to love you and for you to love him back. And God has a plan for your life. It tells us that in scripture. So I want to know what that is. What, what is it you want me to do and why am I here? Again, I know why I'm in Butler. I didn't know why I was here when I first came here. I had no idea. I was in Piermont. I was having fun up there. And it, it just, I was like, where am I going? But after a little while, I understood exactly why I was here. And I fell in love with everybody here. So, you know, I just agree with God, you know. And that was, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in Manhattan. You know, and God like shut the door on that one. And looking back in hindsight, that church isn't there anymore. And here I am over here. So we want to quit making excuses, quit blaming other people, and just admit maybe I'm the common denominator in all this. You know, all of this. Maybe it's me. And then B, believe. If God, I believe that God wants to forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I totally believe that. I believe in his grace and I love your grace and I love your mercy. I believe that Christ died for my sins so I wouldn't have to pay for them. And the bottom line is you either pay for them or you let Jesus Christ pay for them. That's a no-brainer. You know, and that's what got me fired up when somebody said that to me. So I believe that. A, B, C, commit. Because of everything I just said, I commit my life to God. I commit my sins to him. They're yours. You can pay for them, right? And... God, you take charge. I haven't done things so well. I'm going to sit in the passenger seat. You drive the car. You're the CEO of my life at this point. And if he's the ultimate reality and has a plan for your life, why wouldn't I want to do that? That's that stubborn thing in us, right? So I just commit everything to him. And what happens when you do that? Then you receive his forgiveness. All kinds of emotional problems in your life are caused when you don't feel forgiven. There's no reason to carry guilt around in your life when God offered you forgiveness through his son. Free, total forgiveness. And he's waiting to forgive you no matter what you did in your life. No matter what you did. Right? So the commit part in Colossians, it says, he has forgiven all your sins. All. If you look that up in the Greek, all. He has utterly wiped out the evidence of the broken commandments which always hung over our heads. Do you hear that? That was the law. It always hung over our heads because we couldn't do it. It hung over our heads to teach us. It was a school teacher. It was a shadow of what was to come, Jesus Christ. And he has completely annulled it by nailing it to the cross. What a great verse. What a great way to say it. It's if God was saying, look, I want you to get the message. It's all. 
It's like a super stain remover, right? You wipe it out, you shout it out, it's gone. It's, it completely wipes it out. Nothing's hung over your head, so you don't have to keep carrying it. It's not partial forgiveness, and God doesn't say, well, I'm going to keep my eye on you from now on. That's not what it is. Your forgiveness is free, absolutely free, but it's not cheap. Whenever you forgive somebody, it costs you something, doesn't it? Somebody's going around sullying my reputation, and I can forgive them? And believe me, I got my own little non-fan club, I'm sure. We all do. And woe to you when all people speak well of you. <laughs> Just enough to get rid of the curse. I got a few here and there. But it costs me something when I forgive them. And it's the same thing. You know, it costs God. It costs Jesus his life. Somebody's got to pay for it. Somebody has to pay. And Jesus Christ paid for it with his life. In Colossians 1, it says, 114, God has purchased our freedom with his blood and has forgiven all our sins. So God paid the ransom to set you free. If there was another way to do it, he wouldn't have wasted his time. Jesus, arm stretched arms on the cross, and he goes, I love this, because first he said, he's nailed to a cross after they beat him half to death. And he goes, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. Forgive us as we forgive them. And then he looks at the thief on his right and he goes, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And then he shouts out, it is finished. Why didn't he say, I am finished? Because he wasn't finished. He resurrected from the grave three days later. And he hung around for 40 days explaining and teaching and showing everybody, I'm alive. I'm alive. And he's up at the right hand of the Father interceding in prayer for us. But what did he mean when he said, it is finished? I finished the work you sent me to do. I paid for all the sins. The plan of salvation is now complete. All the redemptive work on the cross is now finished. There's nothing you can add to it because it is finished. You know, that means he paid for every dumb thing that we've ever done. And I truly believe every dumb thing we're going to do. You know, as long as we continue in him, we just stay with him and keep coming to him. Like I said, keep those short accounts. But every dumb thing I'm ever going to do, he already paid that price for that means if you're a Christian, you put your faith in Christ and you're carrying around a load of guilt right now, you're carrying around guilt over sins that have already been paid for. And what are you doing that for? I mean, <laughs> when you pay your electric bill, do you carry it around in your pocket after you, got, after you paid it? You totally forget about it. If I paid my mortgage, I'm not carrying that thing around in my pocket. I might burn it, you know, just for a burning party. But... I never think about it again. It's over. It's paid. Paid in full. What are you holding on to something for that God has already paid for? When you confess it to him, he's forgiven you. You don't have to keep confessing it over and over and over again. I think if you do that, it's almost like a, it's a breach of faith. You know, oh, ye of little faith. God says, I forgave you the first time I heard you. Why do you keep bringing it back up? I dropped it in the deepest ocean and put a sign on there and said, no fishing. You keep fishing it back up. We do that. We leave it at the cross. We pick it back up. We leave it. We pick it back up. It's already forgiven, God says. And what a price he paid. And what a gift. Jesus never wanted us to forget that he made the sacrifice for you of his life. So he gave us a symbol called communion. And he said, on this night before he was crucified, he said, this is my blood which seals the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out for the forgiveness of sins of many. Now, communion was really, it's for believers who accepted God's gift of forgiveness. If you've never done that, communion doesn't mean anything to you, right? So so it has no value to you if you're not a believer and accepted the forgiveness of God. But if you're not a believer, maybe that's why God brought you here this morning. I mean, before you were even born, he knew you would be at the Butler Church of the Nazarene on on July 17th at 10.30 in the morning. So you can have every sin in your life forgiven and every sin that you're going to do forgiven. This is your day, man. Seriously. That's why you're here. It's a divine appointment. It's your day to receive forgiveness for everything you've done wrong or everything you're going to do wrong. Wouldn't you like to get in on that? Wouldn't you like to let go of a load of guilt? And again, it's as easy as A, B, C. He did all the hard work. He did all the hard lifting here. You know, and and I just want to pray a prayer of salvation and forgiveness. If you've never prayed this before, pray it with me. Pray it in your mind's eye or your heart. But 
look at it as a, as a divine appointment. Guys, you can come up. Bring your communion with you guys. Father, we just come before you and it's been such a crazy morning and now I understand why. <laughs> I know when you rise to build there's a spiritual enemy that always rises to oppose. And, and Lord, I just pray right now for anybody. A lot of us grew up in religion, you know, and, and a lot of us didn't understand that you didn't come to start a religion. You came to have a relationship with us. And this guilt and, and, and pressure that I put on myself We've all stepped over the line. We all missed the mark. And we all have something twisted that runs down the middle of all of us. And every now and again, it pops its ugly head. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you for understanding all this. Thank you that you know all of this. And thank you for coming to wipe out our sins and to reserve that spot in heaven for us. To pay a debt that we couldn't possibly pay. There's no good that we could do to balance those scales because God is hallowed be thy name, a completely holy, different, holy other. So Lord, right here, right now, for anybody that's here or anybody that wants to just recommit, oh, we like sheep have gone astray. As much as we know now, and we still have a lot of questions and a lot of doubts, but as much as I know now, my heart is bent in your direction right now. I'm not my past. I'm not what I did. I'm not who others say I am. Jesus, you said I am forgiven, redeemed, and set free. Help me to remember that. But I accept. I accept you into my heart. I open it up. You're standing at the door of our hearts and knocking. And you said if we open up our hearts, you will come in and dine with us. And that's what we're about to do. So, Lord Jesus, please come into my life. Please wash away all my sins. And give me that eternal life. My life is yours. I'm going to sit in the passenger seat. And I won't forget to put the seatbelt on. You drive. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're going to remember his sacrifice by taking communion together. Does everybody have one? Okay. These are a little interesting, right? So, the wine part facing the bottom. The other part's on the top. The bread part. But if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, first of all, congratulations. You know, there's a party going on in heaven, it says. But let us help you understand that this is where the journey starts. But Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and broke it, and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. I want you to remember, as you take this bread and eat it, just say to yourself, just whisper it to yourself. Thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing your life for me, and let's partake together. Do you know the Bible says that God forgets? The Bible says that the creator of the universe can actually forget. He chooses to forget your sins once they're cleansed and confessed. The Bible says in Jeremiah, through the prophet, I, the Lord, will forgive and forget their sins. Not just forgive, but he chooses to forget them too. That means when you get to heaven, you go, well, what about that one? He's going to say, what are you talking about? I, I, I distinctly remember forgetting that. Forget about it. I, I've, only, I've not only forgiven it, I forgot about it. I wiped the slate completely clean. Now, if God's forgotten about it, don't you think you should? Yeah, I mean, don't you think you should forget the sins that God has already paid for and forgotten? The bill's paid. The, the slate is wiped clean, seriously. And Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup represents the blood that I'm going to shed for you so that you can be forgiven. So that you can go to heaven. And as you drink this, I just want you to say, Jesus, by faith, I receive your forgiveness. Let's partake. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, 1, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? No condemnation. If you're in Christ, there's no condemnation. That means by the authority of the word of God, I can proclaim to you right now that you're forgiven. You're totally forgiven on the authority of God's word and the blood of Jesus Christ, which we just did metaphorically. You're forgiven. That's amazing love. I know I got a little heavy with sin and blood and all that stuff, but got to go there. I hope, you understand. I hope you get it. I hope you got it today because everything I said, I believe with all my heart. 
We're going to do another song. Why don't we stand together for this?